is the new iPod Mini the coolest digital music player on the market or just another pretty space? Find out in this hour of Call for Help. Hi, Call for Help. Hey, Call for Help is on. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, how are you? Welcome to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte, and this is the show where we help you with your technology, whether it's a computer, a PDA, an MP3 player, a DV camera, a camcorder, a digital camera, whatever it is that you use that's got a chip in it that you connect to your computer, that's what we tell you about. That's what we talk about. That's what we help you with. The idea being to give it away. I want you to become the expert. I'm going to just give you everything I got, and then it'll all go in your brain, and you won't need us anymore. And that would be great. That would be fine with me. I want you to be the expert. And no question, by the way, is too simple. No question is too dumb. We lo in fact, those are the ones I like the best, because I know those are the ones that are hard to ask, right? Because they're kind of embarrassing. And, and you, I should know that. But you know, if you ask it, I guarantee you a 1,000 other people, 10,000, 100,000 other people watching the show will say, oh, huh. Glad he asked that. That's something I've been wondering. Boy, if she hadn't said that, I wouldn't have known. So please, anything you want to ask, this is, this is the place to do it. We're all friends here. It's a friendly place. We never mock anybody. Today, we're going to talk about that new iPod, the mini. Well, we mocked that. They're small. They come in five different colors. They hold four gigabytes of music. They also cost 250 bucks. We mocked that. So are they worth it? Chris Breen's got one. Ooh, they're kind of cute. Okay, wait a minute. Now, they're kind of cute. He's going to weigh the differences <laughs> and tell you which he thinks and whether it's worth the money which he thinks is the better he's the ipod expert you know wrote the secrets of the ipod and everything i mean there's nobody knows more about ipods than chris breen he just got one they just came to the store on the 20th i think like three or four days ago so that's you know that's that's hot stuff he's got right there and cat's here she's got a new site that'll turn you on to new music mm -hmm. it's kind of look at this a 3d musical search engine that links artists together. So if you like one thing, you can say, well, how does that relate? And then you can hear samples and buy albums too through it. Very cool. Kat, how do you find these things? Do you have a magic? No, uh, I mean, people all around here send me stuff. They send you stuff too? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm sure you spend a lot of time surfing. How much, how much oh, time yeah. a day would you say you spend you know, on a computer? A lot, because as soon as I get home, I get on my computer. Your new computer. Yeah, yeah. so I'd say, you know, a good eight hours a day. Yeah. Me too, at least. That's ridiculous. Isn't that absurd? Yeah, that's a lot of time. If, if you spent that time watching Barney Miller, you'd feel like a nitwit. Uh, yeah. You would, wouldn't would you? you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but fortunately, it's a computer, so you're doing other stuff, too. Um, I was reading Chris Breen's story from his newsletter about how he got his iPod Mini and yeah. all the, the line. triumph and tribulation yeah. he went to get through it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll find out. Like He's going to talk about huh? it. Well, it's, you know, who would have thought it? I, know. I was I was so wrong. I said that's too expensive. There's no one's gonna buy it. Yeah, and they did. Pink's the hot color. That's what my daughter wants. Pink. My daughter has a five gigabyte iPod, the original iPod, which I gave her my hand me down. Uh huh. And she says I want the. I said it's four gigabytes. She said yeah, but it's pink. Uh -huh. I said get some nail polish. We'll fix it. <laughs> oh yeah yeah. Who's our first caller? All right, let's do it on the phone. It's Joe from Toppenish, Washington. Hey Joe, how are you? Hi, Leo. Uh, hi, Kat. How you doing? Hey. Welcome to the show. We're doing great. Thanks. I was wondering, I'm in the market for a webcam or a webcam camera uh, combo. Okay. I was wanting to know the differences and... Uh, great question, yeah. What, uh, what are you going to use it for? Well, uh, just basic uh, talking to friends, you know, so on the computer. So you're going to use it for, uh, for teleconferencing? Yeah, that okay. and uh, as well as taking on vacations to I take pictures. I think this I'm still here. I'm looking down here. I got, I got one. Look at that. Oh, I count a mouse. So um, that's two different needs and and two different, very different quality needs. When you're just doing net camming uh, uh, to talk and teleconferencing, you're squishing the the image that's coming out of this thing down so much that really what's going into it isn't all that important. Okay. You know, the image quality is just so bad. And for those, a simple USB, a $99 USB net cam like this one, this is the uh, Logitech Quick Cam 4000 Pro, which I like quite a bit. And that's under, uh, under 100 bucks. works with Mac or PC. And, and it's a nice little camera. Um, 
but it's USB. Mm -hmm. That means that the, 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 the channel to the computer is pretty slim. Now, that's not a problem because the channel to the Internet is even slimmer, right? So you're getting enough quality coming down here. But now, if you're going to start using it to take pictures that you want to put on the web or, uh, you know, like for a spy cam, that kind of thing, all yeah. of a sudden, those qu the quality of those can be higher, and this starts to be, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I have to squish this image so much to get it down USB 1 that the quality is not good. So if quality starts to become important, then you want to look at a FireWire camera with a higher, chan higher speed channel connection or USB 2.0. Now, I have to say, none of that makes any difference if the lens in here is cruddy or, you know, the, the, uh, the optics or the software in here isn't very good. So you've got to get, you've got to, first of all, think about how, how much you want to spend to make this look good. For instance, I'll give you an example. Best possible quality picture, you have a DV camcorder, a digital video camcorder? Uh, no, not, okay. not yet. Best possible picture comes from a DV camcorder hooked up by FireWire. And that'll work on NetMeeting, it'll work on iChat, it'll work on any, any of those programs. And then you've got a $1,000 camera, right, with great quality lenses and excellent optics and a high-speed channel connecting down to the computer. So that's where you're going to get the best possible quality. Now, does it make any difference in, on a NetMeeting chat? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe a little bit. Uh, so, and since you don't have one already, I would say... If, if image quality is important and you already have a DV camcorder, just use a DV camcorder. Now, you need to get some special software from Orange Micro that will allow you to use that DV camcorder with Windows. It works fine on the Mac, but, uh, but you need to go to Orange Micro to get uh, the, the software. Uh, let me see. Is it Orange? I have to go uh, do a Google search. I think it's orangemicro.com, but I don't know. I hate to type in random URLs. So what's your budget on this thing? Uh, well, it's for myself as well as a friend of mine who's... So he's uh, going to get one, too? Yeah, her budget doesn't... She is. ...quite, you know, meet the expectations of high... I understand. Price, you know. So she should probably get the, you know... Now, Orange sells, by the way, flat, FireWire webcams. These are slightly better because it is FireWire, and they're not very expensive. Now, what's the difference between the UBS and the FireWire? USB is just a slower... Um, uh, speed and so as a result you have to compress the data in the camera this is okay. our review by the way Patrick Norton did a review of this program the orange micro webcam DV so if you're gonna if she has a camcorder or you have a camcorder you can buy this software it will make it work with NetMeeting or any Windows application okay. using FireWire best quality and that's fairly cheap if you've already got the camera. Since you don't and you want to save money, then this is what I would recommend. I, I actually like these a lot. Logitech makes them. Uh, it's called the Quick Cam 4000. It's under a um, 100 bucks. It's got good software, really good software that comes with it. And, uh, and I think it gives you pretty good, a, a, excellent image quality. Okay. And this okay. is the Logitech site. Let me just show you here. If I can find the cameras on this site. How are the cameras? There we go. There it is. That's the that's the baby. All right. They, by the way, and I forgot to bring mine in. I have this quick cam orbit. This is kind of cool. This is a little more expensive. This follows your face around. We showed this. We showed this a while ago. You know, I don't think that that's so cool that you would spend the extra thirty bucks for it. I'd probably recommend the four thousand. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, thanks, though. Hey, uh, thank you. That's going to be fun. It's a great way. You know, if you have a if you have a girlfriend out of town uh, or friends that you don't get to see very often, it's the next best thing to be in there. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. I got, uh, what I did is I got, a, 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 whoops, it's just, I think I broke this. I got an eyesight uh, for my uh, Mac, and I have one on my laptop and I have one at home. And so when I go on the road, I can call my kids and say hi to them. And it's really great. The quality is really excellent. And that's a FireWire camera, which is really good, good quality. Thanks for the call. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to add new options to the Send To menu. An incredibly useful Windows tip, plus more of your live calls. So stay tuned. To my little friend, the camera. Hello, Kim. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Time for a Windows tip. As promised today, we're going to show you how to add things to your Send To menu. You know about the Send To menu? I love it. When you right-click on something, you see this menu that pops up that says Send To, and then pops up a list of things. So the idea is, for instance, if you wanted to copy a file to a floppy, you just right-click it, Send To, and then you would select the floppy or the CD drive. Or, and as sometimes as programs install themselves, you'll see they'll add themselves to the Send To. But wouldn't you like to add your own stuff 
to the send to menu? Well, you can just by copying it and pasting it into the into the, the, the send to folder. Now, I have to show you some tricks because the send to folder is normally hidden away. It's in the Windows directory. So we're going to go to C, Windows. And now you'll probably get a warning when you go. We've turned that warning off. It says, don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't, no, no, no. It's okay. You can go in there. Just be careful when you go in there. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to say, well, wait a minute. There, I, I don't see. There should be a send right here. There should be. There's no send to. Yeah, because you have to show hidden files. So first you've got to go to Tools, Folder Options, View, and then you have to click this button here, Show Hidden Files, because Send To is a hidden, hidden file. And once we apply that, oh, all of a sudden I see a lot more stuff in here, including, and you'll see it's kind of, it's kind of not, uh, uh, it's kind of dim. Where is it? Where's my Send To? Hey, where'd it go? Well, it's in here. Some, you know, there's so many files in here, I can't find it. Send to the send to file. It's gone. How can I, I have a send to file? Let me open it this way. Here, we'll do it this way. We're gonna, uh, that's, that's bizarre, all right? It's disappeared. So it's disappeared. Computer. Where's my send to file? Dag nabbit. Oh, I know where it is. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong place. That's Windows 95 and 98. And Windows XP, it's in documents and settings. Oh, uh, and you have to go to your user. And there it is, send to. Now, that's again, it's still a hidden file. See how it's kind of un... Uh, so, now, inside here are the shortcuts for the stuff that's already in there. I'm going to give you an extra. You want a little extra send to tip? You yeah. can add anything in there, but here's a, here's a quick way. Whoops, I just closed it. Here's a quick way to add things to send to anytime you want to send to, send to. You don't have to go to the, all of this. Just make a, an, a, uh, an alias of the send to folder, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to create a shortcut, and then we're going to put the send to into send to. Ooh. Okay, now inside send to is a send to. Shortcut to send to, and you might want to rename that. Let's name it something like, I, this is what I call it, send to, send to. Hmm. Okay, now watch. Anytime I want, let's say I want to add Mozilla to my send to menu. Okay. I right click, select send to, and then I select send to, send to. Uh, and click OK, and now watch. It's in my send to menu now. I've added Mozilla. See? Because I sent it to send to. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, that's probably the most complicated Windows <laughs> tip I've ever done. Yeah. Do you get that? You kind of lost me, but I think I got it. Well, it's really handy because now you can send to anything to send, send to. to. Send to. And I, but, you know, the truth is that send to menu is probably one of the most useful things in, in Windows because you can use it, you know, for, I put my text editor in there. I put all of, you know, things that you would want, Word, Microsoft Word, whatever, things you want to use to open files. Uh -huh. And now you can send anything there by just right-clicking on the thing you want to send to send to, and you send it to. And then you send it to send to. Right. And then you send it to send to. Thank you, Kat. I feel like the three stooges, all three in one. If you want more Windows <laughs> tips, <laughs> okay. go to techtv.com, call for help, and uh, click answers and tips for our full tips archive. Mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Let's take another call, Kat. Yeah. Send to send to. Let's go ahead and do that. It's uh, Ken yay. from Flower Mound, Texas, Leo. Hello, Ken. How are you? I'm doing great, Leo. How about yourself? I'm great. Now, see, look at that awesome picture. What kind of net cam are you using for that? Uh, this is actually a camcorder using uh, the yeah. orange micro drivers that you <laughs> yeah. recommended. There you go. Now, the frame rate's not super good. That's because, and this is the problem with the Internet, you know, you, you don't know how much bandwidth you're going to get. But look how good the image is. Yeah, that, it's a lot better than uh, the regular webcam I was using before. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it, it looks like you're right here with us. So that's very cool. Your, your lips aren't moving, but other, other than that, <laughs> well, there's a nice smile. What can we do for you, Ken? Well, I've got a question for you. Yes, uh, first, I wanted to mention I'm a big fan of Tech TV, and I uh, hope next time I'm back home in the Bay Area, I could see you live. I hope you question. will. What brought you to Flower Mound? So you're a Bay Arean? Yeah, actually, I'm a Marin County native and uh, moved here almost 10 years ago. Oh, oh, and I'm sorry. But Is that okay? I love Texas as well. Oh, all right. It's the Bay Area, but I love Texas. I love the name Flower Mound. I love also your shirt. Looks like Wiley e. Coyote and the Roadrunner on it there. It sure is. That's what I thought. See, I could see that because of your camera. So what can I do for you? Well, my question is regarding power supplies. Yes. I've got a PC that I'm using to archive videos. Oh, boy. Uh, that I record with uh, Replay TV right. and download uh, using DV Archive software. Okay. But I'm trying to add lots of disk drives to a single PC right. and concern that the power supply just may not be adequate. You're absolutely right. That's, in fact, the most challenging thing, or one of the most challenging things is hard drives because when, they, when you start the machine, they all spin up, and that's their maximum. That's their peak power use right there. They all come on at the same time. If you have more than four, you're probably going to have a problem. You said you want to put eight in? Eight and potentially up to 12. Yeah. You might look at, not only are you going to have 
power issues, you're going to have a massive heat problem. You might look at external drives. If you use FireWire, you can daisy chain 12 very easily. Absolutely. In fact, I have one 500 gig uh, FireWire 800 drive. There you go. Oh, but man. the price is a lot higher for yeah. those drives uh, than the drives uh, that I've already it found. Is. Are, you must be using a Mac if you're using FireWire 800. No, actually, it's a PC, but it's uh, using a LC drive uh, yeah. that is FireWire 800, and I just added a little... Uh, PCI card for Those it. Those LeCide drives are great. Roger, would you bring that? Uh, we have a case over there that's opened up. I can show you. I know you know this, Kent, but I'm just going to show everybody what you're talking about. So inside, thank you, Raj. Sure. Inside the case here, you know, you're going to mount your, I don't know how you're going to get 12 inside a case. You Actually, I've have, got the spots for it. It's a, a giant Lee, case. Uh, huge case. <laughs> yeah. You've got plenty of space in it. Well, this is the power supply here, and it, this, you know, typically there'll be 250 to 350 watts, which is going to be very scant. Uh, for what you want to do. These are easy to replace, by the way. You just unscrew them. You'll have to make sure that when you get a power supply, it has the cutouts in the same spot, unless you want to do some milling on the back there. I recommend PC power and cooling for my power supplies. Um, I don't know if they have something as... They must have something as powerful well, the as... The power really. supply I'm in right now is an Antec uh, 550 watt. Yeah, Antec is the case manufacturer, and it may say 550, but a lot of these Taiwanese case manufacturers you know, the 550 plus or minus a couple of hundred. Uh, I do recommend PC power and cooling. If you're going to go to these, uh, the, the high-end drives, these are the, just the best, and they really go up. When they say 510, it's a, it's a genuine 510. It's, not, it's no bogosity. Now, let me show you uh, a website that, let me see if I can find a link to it. I think we have, yeah, PC World. Now, this is a little out of date, but it'll give you an idea. PC World uh, did a, a couple of a years ago a table for how much wattage each device uses in your system. Uh, and you're going to use the upper li limit on, a, um, on the drive. Now, frankly, I think that you know, this says 25 watts. I think you're thinking more of 45 watts a drive. So you're thinking considerable. Not all the time, of course. Once it's spun up, it doesn't need that. But you should add up all the wattage required by the motherboard, the processor. These new Athlon and uh, high-end Pentium chips, 150 watts. That's low. 150 watts, OK? Uh, RAM, it's not bad. You see PCI cards aren't bad. That graphics card, if you give a high-end graphics card, that's going to start to add up. The things that are the hottest in your system, that's, those are the ones that are eating the most uh, power. So you can see if you're going to put, if you're saying, I'm going to put in six drives, right there, that's 300 watts. Right well, there. Well, is it possible to add two drives at the same time and tie the grounds together or something uh, so well, they don't uh, you, have voltage conflict? I think, frankly... Yeah, I mean, there is, you know, the, the, the guys at, uh, the guys at um, Weak Knees had this problem in a TiVo. You can't upgrade the power supply, really, in a TiVo. And if you put two, two big drives in there, there weren't, wasn't enough juice. They actually made a little switch that sequenced the drives. Because, again, it's only at startup, right? So it would start up the first drive, wait till it was spun up, and its power usage went back down. Then it spins up the second drive. You might go to weakknees.com and see if you can... They, I think they have the circuit diagram on there. See if you can kind of... Uh, uh, stand on their shoulders and do something like that. Otherwise, I'd say go external. I mean, you're going to put that many drives in, it's going to be really tough to get that many drives working in a case. Even with a big case, the heat issues and the power issues, scary. But Ken, I admire your ambition. We have links to all of these things up on the website, so if you want to get more information about PC power, cooling, great place for power supplies, and the wattage consumption that you can expect. Great. Right. Thank good, you very much. Good luck, Kent. <laughs> you're a madman. And come back to the Bay Area sometime. We'd love to see you on the show. I Coming sure up will. next, we love having guests in the, uh, in the audience. We're going to take a look at a free file that will help prevent computer injuries. Oh! Ah! By reminding you to get up and stretch every once in a while. That was an injury. And still ahead, the iPod Mini may be one fashionable piece of hardware, but is it enough to justify its $250 price tag? Chris Bain will be here with his review. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Call for Help. You know, it's a terrible thing about computers. As much as we love them, you know, I was talking to Kat earlier, we could spend 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 hours sitting in front of the computer like this. That's got to be bad for you. It's time to take a break. Fawn has a free file that will remind you to get up and stretch.
stretch before you get all tied up in knots, fun, Lou. That's right. It's not good to sit hunched over staring at the screen do for you, hours. Do you do that? Do you get I up and take a break? You're at, smart. Well, I downloaded this, so now I get. We'll force you to do break. this. <laughs> yep. Break time. Now this. Yeah. Now they have a new version, right? There's a new version, and I downloaded it onto three of our set computers, and I didn't like it. So don't do the new version. But you can you can still? You can if you want to try. You can still get the old you version. You can still get the old version, and I like this much better. Little hummingbird. It's made by Little Hummingbird. Um. So you can change the background color, you know, uh -huh. it can be a single color, it could be graphic, which is the rainbow color, or you can have two I colors. like the gradient like that, like that's pretty, better? yeah, yeah. And we can customize it to whatever color Yeah, fuchsia is like. really not my style. How about like black to blue, that's kind of boyish. Yeah, see, that's nice, like that's, that a, that's a boy color. Okay. okay, so you can also go over to the display, and you can change oh. the message. So, what do you want it to say Well, to for instance, I think it's important to stretch, so stretch okay. should be one. Yeah. Actually, get up, stretch. And then uh, something people don't do often, you've got to exercise your eyes, too. You've been looking at the same focal point for hours. Look off in the distance, so look out the window. Get up, stretch, Did and look. Right? Yeah, I don't want to have exercise. Just look out the window. Okay. Look out the look window. Look out the window. Yeah. And do that for uh, 10 minutes. And then you can set the font. That's great. I love that. Now, how often are we going to do that? Um, oh, let's set the font to something cool that will like? make me want to do that. What's Tunga? Tunga? Tunga. No, I, I can't read Tunga. Hmm. That's it. It looks like Sanskrit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a nice you like one. That one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you there can also go. change the color. It doesn't have to be white. It can be red, 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 red. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. There. You can't miss that. There Get up, go. stretch, look and out the up window. Up. And then go over to miscellaneous. Okay. And you can set when you how often? like it to come on. Every thirty minutes is Every good. Every thirty minutes is good yeah. for you. Okay. And you could play music you too. You can. You know what you can I could do is I could have it play a, a song. Uh -huh. Like it makes me want to jump up and yeah boogie. So check it out. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. And it's free. It's free. Break time from littlehummingbird.com. And Fawn Lu, who is our little hummingbird, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> really nice free file of the day. I like that. And, it's a, and it is good advice. People don't ever do that. Can't yeah. you get up and stretch? Nope. You don't? Neither do I. I mean, I guess subconsciously yeah. I'll get thirsty or have to go well, to the bathroom. Well, eventually you have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. That's like, that could be like every... But yeah, sometimes I'm like in bed on my laptop yeah. and I just get completely cramped. Yeah, you realize only after <laughs> it's too late. Right. But this up. is great. It'll remind you to cool. get up every 30 minutes. Thank you, Fawn Lou. I appreciate it. Let's get another caller on the uh, line here. Who do okay. you have for us? Okay, it's Justin, J Jason. Jason. From Munsing, uh, Michigan. Hey, Jason, how there are you? He is. Nice try at that. Munising. Wow, there Munising. You go. Well, no, look right. how it's spelled. I, you know, we, we, that's an interesting uh, Munising. Okay, we got it now. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. Hi, Leo. Great to be on. What can I do for you? Okay, uh, I guess the question in its simplest form, I work on PCs, and yep. I wanted to know, I just got a call on a Mac, okay. a Power Mac G4. Oh, good. I just want to know, when you're upgrading RAM, is there a difference between the RAM that goes into a Mac and the RAM that goes into a PC? Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, this uh, is an old Power Mac G4, though. Well, see, that's the key. No, that, it should still be all right, but here's what you do. There's a site called everymac.com. If you're going to start oh, working on great. Macs, you need this. And you can actually look at Mac systems. I'm going to look at it by manufacturer, Apple. And then uh, you can look at the G4s. Now, you need to know uh, which G4 even it is, if it was the beige or the blue. And, you know, there's all, the different, all right. these different ones. Do you know what the speed was? Uh, well, that's the thing. I had the, the lady give me the serial number over the phone. Mm -hmm. And like on Dell and Gateway, you can plug in the serial number on their site. Right, and you can't do that. <laughs> Apple doesn't do that. Doesn't do that. Do that. No. So you need to figure out. Okay. Um, now, if you're going to buy some more RAM, um, you can go to Crucial and places like that. They have Apple in there. You know the Crucial memory selector? Right. So they have Apple in there. It uses, in most cases, it uses DIMMs that are identical to the PC DIMMs. You just want to make sure, as with the PC, that you get the right speed and all that stuff. You know, and so that's, that's the only issue. I actually buy my Mac RAM from a, a, a site called Trans International, uh, with no vowels in there, transintool.com. Uh, they they do uh, uh, PC and Mac RAM, but I've, I've always bought my Mac RAM from them, and I've never had a problem. Some Mac RAM sellers don't sell the best uh, quality RAM. This is this is a very good one, and they break it down by model, so you really you know you're getting the right RAM. So that's another that's another way uh, to do it. So you can say Apple uh, G4, and uh, you know was it the Quicksilver? Was it the beige and white? Was the blue and white? The Mini Tower? You know you you. You can tell by looking at it which one it is. That shouldn't be too hard. And then once you figure that out, you can you can say what 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 the upgrade that you want to buy is. So it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, if it looks like this, then that's what it was. 
Hey, Transit hey, International and every Mac. Yeah. I want to thank you and uh, all the people at Call for Help and Screensavers putting out some of the best TV that's out there today. Hey, well, I thank you for watching it. Ain't no problem. We, we work hard on this show. I mean, everybody who's here, both in front of the camera and behind the camera, works very hard, and uh, it's really gratifying to know that you like what we do. Thank you. Coming up, Kat's going to help you expand your musical horizons exponentially with a website that links similar artists together. This is kind of a cool idea. But before we hit the break, let's test your technologist's daily quiz time. Go to the website, click on the quiz link. Get the answer right, you're in the drawing for a Tech TV t-shirt. Our question, which of these audio formats will, will play on an iPod? AAC, WMA, AUG, Vorbis, or I hear ya. I hear ya. Get to the website, give us the answer. We'll talk about it when Call for Help continues. Say, hey, 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 hey. Who's that? Stay right here. Who's that? You see this? This would be the Call for Help website. A fabulous place for all sorts of stuff we talk about on the show, including, including the fabulous graphics files that come for the Call for Help show. You put Call for Help on your desktop. This is it right here. You get your wallpaper, you get your icon set, everything. TechTV.com slash call for help. Show your geek pride. Get the call for help desktop. I wear it everywhere. Now it's time for Cat's Clicks. It's not time for Cat's Clicks it's because not? my site won't open because oh. everybody's there checking it out. This is always the problem. We almost don't want to tell it. people about the site ahead of time. And then it crashed. And oh, this was, was a heavy so bandwidth good. probably. What was it? Uh, is it Java? It's probably Java. Huh? Yeah, I think that it's... I think that it's Java, yeah, mm -hmm. and it was so cool because it showed you how bands were related to one another. We'll, we'll get it up in a That's minute. That's right. We'll show, you, we'll show you later. Oh, I think we saw a, We saw a little clip of it at the beginning of the show. It, it, it really looked cool. Get off of my website, people. <laughs> get off. <laughs> it's the call for help effect. Coming up, well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. If we can get it, if you can get it running, we'll come back. And, oh, don't cry. Cat, it's going to... Oh, Cat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're making me feel... You guys killed my website. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it just shows how popular Cat's clicks are, Cat. Think of it that way. I guess. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> Poor Cat. Will somebody please give her some flowers? With the success of their portable digital music player, Apple decided to improve upon it by slimming it down and making it lighter. They even cut the price. The ultimate upgrade, it's the mini iPod. Or is it just a marketing gimmick? <laughs> nice biceps. Chris Breen will show us when Call for Help returns. Stay here. Well, I remember in January uh, at the Macworld Expo, Steve Jobs had one big product introduction. It was this mini iPod. Uh, everybody was saying Apple's going to do a, fl a flash based a solid state MP3 player, but he kind of fooled us all. It's still hard drive based and it's not that cheap. But finally they're in the stores. February 20th, Mac expert Chris Breen stood in line at the Apple store. Yes, I did. And got one. And I got one. <laughs> and it's, um, you couldn't get it from Apple? Where is it? Would no, you no, lose it already? No, no, no. It's, it, they're so small. They're I just keep misplacing them. I actually kind of yeah. like that. Yeah, it's on my tourniquet here. Yeah. Keep it over there. Yeah, uh, I stood in line at the uh, Valley Fair store in San Jose. Yeah, and, uh, and that's kind is. of the home home office for Apple. Stores. That was kind of the home, and it was a lot of people. To me. A lot yeah. of people buying them. Uh, yeah, you know, I was I thought it was going to go one way or the other. Either there were going to be nobody in line, right. and they would say, "Oh yeah, well if you buy five, we'll throw in one free right. because we can't give the things away," <laughs> right. and or there'd be 500 people in line and everybody wanted. And it was it was about 40 people ahead of me, and then maybe 100 people in line. I guess it, it proves that Apple fans will buy just about anything. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I mean, is that not what it Here, hold this, hold this. Okay. Ooh, yeah, see? Now, see, like. you're starting to get it now. Well, it is, it's metal, it's an aluminum case, and yeah. it's rounded. It's rounded. It feels good it's in your small. hand. The controls are very nice. Yeah, it's all, instead of having the buttons at the top now, it's all on this thing, and there's no, there's no moving parts. It's just, well, there's a little button here. Yeah, there's a little button, and actually the wheel moves, and now oh, it's the wheel so, does move? Yeah. So you can, you click it in the four uh, compass directions, and that's how you get around. But it's not, oh, I guess it's kind of moving. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. clicking, you mean. Yeah, it clicks yeah. a little bit. So, um, oh, let me unhold it and we can turn it on. There yeah. we go. And the display's a little smaller. Display is a little smaller, but it's remarkably clear considering yeah. how small it is. And the backlight looks great on that thing. Does I prefer it, yeah. the backlight on that to my real iPod. Okay. Uh, the only thing wrong with it is the price, obviously. It's, yeah, and, uh, you know, that's going to be every person's decision, whether they find 250 
dollars worth of value in the thing or not. I think it's 50 bucks too expensive. Yeah, because you can get something, for 250 you could get a 40 gig Dell. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, so particularly for PC users, or uh, they're, you know, they're going to think hard about that. What's, but, your, what's um, your mini list? Your mini, my iPod mini list? Ah, well, that's one thing that this does is that a lot of people have music collections that are quite extensive. Yeah, four gigs. Mm -mm. And that's actually 3.7 when you format yeah, the thing down. Yeah. So what happened, and, and, the, and Apple anticipated this, and when you plug this thing into your uh, Mac or your PC, if your music collection exceeds that, iPods will pop up a message and say, you know, you have more music than will fit on your iPod. So what I'm going to do is configure a list for you oh. and drop it over there. Good idea, execution. How does it decide what so to put good. in there? Well, that's the problem. Is it isn't very smart about it because what it will do is it will take well, it AIFF know? files oh. and WAV files that are big, yeah. and it'll dump them down onto your iPod Mini. No, we don't want those. We don't want that. So I've come up with a little trick. Ah, oh, because Mr. these are Chris Max iPod of, secret screen brain. That's is at it me. Again. So what I've done is I created a smart playlist, and the idea is you create a playlist that takes out all those big fat files that you don't want. Ah. So, you don't want AIFF, right. you don't want WAVE, you don't right. want QuickTime movie files. You don't want holiday music or children's or music. Or children's music. And if it's under a minute, forget it. Right, you don't need it. And also, I've gone in and rated everything, so I want stuff that's better than three stars. Or you could do it, stuff I've played more, or right. stuff I've played less. Yeah. These smart playlists are really useful, so that's great. And you, uh, uh, this is interesting. This is new, this isn't in the current... Uh, it is in the current, yeah, it you is? can limit, but... To the number of megabytes allowed on yeah, it? Yeah, and you have to do that with this because yeah. if your playlist, if your conditions still are larger than that, it, won't it will still pop up and say, I'm sorry, it's right. still too big. I'm going to copy what I want. Right, so what you do is you set it up so it's 3.5 gigs. What colors do you, what color there. choices do you have with this sucker? You get your blue, you get your silver, you get your green, you get your gold, and you get your pink. And you didn't choose the pink. No. <laughs> Although, I think pink was very popular. I kind of oh, went yeah. down and canvassed my daughter wants. people. Yeah. A lot of women she, want to You know, I could, uh, truthfully, now that I look at it, I could see why Abby, who is 12, would love something like this. Because yeah. it is cute. It's little. She doesn't have a huge collection. In fact, she can't fill a five gigs. Well, so I could see why she, she, she might actually like this. It is cute. But it's, I'm not going to buy her something for $250. Yeah, 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 I like get it. You do. I can tell you like it. I, I do like it. And um, What else is new and different in this? Well, one thing is it charges over USB 2.0. Okay. This is, you know, this may seem like a subtle thing, but it's actually, while we were off camera, you were talking about, well, I, my I need this little thing yeah. and I haven't got my firewall. Now you can ch uh, charge it over 2.0 okay. USB. That cool. isn't possible with a 3G. That wasn't possible that with the earlier... With, yeah, you cannot do that with no. this. And didn't you, they have a USB cable for the Windows? What they did is they made this sort of weird hybrid cable. Yeah. So it plugged in here and you had FireWire on one end so you could uh -huh. charge it. And then USB 2.0 oh, on the, the other the USB end. did not charge it. It did not charge oh, it. And now it. it charges this thing okay. Okay. over here. So how's, how's the battery life on it? Um, I have not done extensive testing on the battery life, but people who have done so say the battery life is actually better than on the third generation. Well, it's a smaller hard drive. It's this new, these new little mini Hitachi hard drives. Yeah, it's a little Hitachi 4 yeah. gig, uh, again, formats 3.7, and it's enclosed in a uh, compact flash form. Oh, interesting. So actually, it is swappable. So it's like a user serviceable swappable? Mm, that's the hard part of How it. How do you get it open? <sighs> okay, I've seen plans. You want to you hear <laughs> Have the... you tried the, it? This is your brand new one. Uh, well, you notice there's a little ding there in the bottom. Yeah, you tried it. A little screwdriver attempt? A screwdriver yeah, attempt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you actually have to take a hair dryer <laughs> and loosen the oh, glue so that's in there. Oh, it's the glue. glued in there. You take those things off, and then you have to pull it straight up or you break this, and then you have to pry <laughs> no, that up or you break no, that. I'm sorry. I'm uh, not taking a hairdryer to my Mini. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, this is, you know, the third generation is tough. This is really tough. Now, do you think this is kind of taking off on the, uh, the Mini Cooper uh, thing? Because it is a kind of that same kind of stylish, it, it small... It is, and it, has, it doesn't have that English engineering that is so uh, <laughs> desirable. <laughs> no. Um, no, this is finally... What else should we know? It's, it's, I see you have a cradle. Same. I have a cradle, and you have to pay extra for that one. Oh, it doesn't come with a cradle. No, if you, um, if you compare the two, you will see that one is a little wider than the other. So it won't work with your other cradle. It will work with oh, the will. other one. Yeah, so if you already have another one, you don't need it, but this, the smaller one holds it better. Okay. Um, and all your peripherals so the connector will is work the same in the bottom, then? Connector is the same, so you can still use the your charger. auto charger. Yeah. Your iTrip, will that work? iTrip works as well. Okay, because it's and same at the This top. is the Belkin one, and yeah. that works as well. What doesn't work is uh, the card reader. Card reader, right, because, okay. And the voice control. Voice thing. And because it's not built into firmware. It's not a matter of it physically not fitting. It's a software issue. It's a software issue. Right. So they need to upgrade that. When I talked to Apple about that, they said, talk to Belkin. 
So they just sort of said, you know, our SDK is out there for them. Belkin's got to do the work. They've got to do the work, or whoever. Griffin is making one as well. So. I have to say, oh, you're right. The uh, I don't know. You can't tell how good the backlight is on uh, TV, probably. But it really, that's that's really it's good. It's very bright, very crisp. It looks great. Yeah. Um, it's a better, much better screen, frankly. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I it really like the screen though, on this of, one a lot. Because of the small size. Yeah, so I'm hoping that when they come out with the fourth generation of the iPod, they take some of these innovations. That wheel I like a lot. I hope they put that on the fourth generation. Yeah. I like the screen. I hope they put that yeah. one on the fourth generation. Bottom line? Buy it? <sighs> you know, that's really up to you. It's a you personal decision. If you've got bucks, 250 burn bucks, a hole in your and burn a hole in your pocket, <laughs> fine. Um, I hope that people's conjecture is true that it's six months problem. from now, it'll be 200 bucks. I'd buy it at 175. Would you? Yeah. Okay. It's still a little too much for me. But I have to say, it's really cute. It's really it's cute. Very, it's a desirable object yeah. of, of uh, gadgetry. Uh, you think it's more robust because of this metal case? It might be a little tougher? It may be. And I've, again, I've seen the inside of these things, and it's, everything is Let, really crammed in there, so it's not going to... Go, oh, no, go no, out no, for no, a long no, one. No, I'll just... <laughs> I paid for that. If you want to learn more about Apple's tiny little teeny weeny creation, I could eat this. Get in my belly. iPod baby. Visit our website, techtv.com slash call for help. There it is, a first look. I don't think anybody's shown this yet. I mean, it literally just came it out. It just came ago. out. Apple couldn't get us one, but Chris Breen could. He's the man. All right, coming up next, the gauntlet has been thrown. The challenge accepted. Will today's Wired World contestant have the mental fortitude required to pillage our big board? Find out. When Attila the Hun calls for help right after this. <laughs> you know, we should get one of these for the big board. Nah, that would be a prize. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. It's time for the Wired World Challenge. Your turn to show us your smarts. Cat Schwartz, who's on the line here? Yo, my site's back up. Yay. Yeah, we'll get to it. Can we, get, can we do it later? Yes, sir. Good. All right. All right. On the phone, it's Ginny from Beaver, Pennsylvania, ready to play the game. Hey, Ginny, how are you? Hello, Ginny. No, mm. Jay. Ginny, can you hear me? <laughs> Ginny, can you hear me? Can Ginny? you hear me? She's up. Hey, Ginny, Ginny now we got gotcha. you. How you doing? Hi, Leo. I'm doing fine. How are well, you today? We're very well. Happy Tuesday. Now, I'm going to give you, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you four categories. You pick a category. I'll give you a question from that category. If you get it right... In 15 seconds or less, you know what you do? You pick a number from 1 to 25. Lots of good prizes, including, I think we got a Photoshop under there, all sorts of stuff. Are you ready, Jenny? You got your thinking cap on? Okay, I'm all right. ready. Here are your categories for today. Foreign Affairs, Resolution Solution, Hollywood Robots, and Down the Rabbit Hole. Which would you like? Resolution Solution. I like that idea, too. Let's see if it's... A what are, what do they measure scanner and printer resolutions in? What, what unit? When they DPI. say DPI, dots per inch, you're absolutely right. Congratulations. Pick a number from 1 to 25. 24. Number 24. Spin it around. You've got Pinnacle Studio 8 from Pinnacle Systems. It's the professional movie making system. If you like editing videos, this is the easiest way to do it. Congratulations. I Thank hope you, you can use that. Can you use that, Jenny? Oh, I'll try to. Good. Have a good time. Send us your videos. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for playing with us. The Wire World Challenge happens every day. Head over to our website to sign up so you can play with us tomorrow. Now let's give you another chance to take our daily quiz. Go to the website. Click the quiz link. Get the right answer. You're in the drawing for a Tech TV shirt. Our question of the day, which of these audio formats works on an iPod? AAC, WMA, AUG Vorbis, or I Hear Ya? the website go to the uh, give us your answer and we'll talk about it in just a few minutes as call for help continues stay right here welcome back to call for help before the break we asked you which audio formats would play on an ipod now all mp3 players will play mp3s but everyone uh, plays a different form of enc encrypted music in this case aac advanced audio encoding it's actually the uh, successor to mp3 and and it'll play mp3s of course and uh, apple's own audio file format ai ff and windows uncompressed waves and audible files too but uh, we were looking for aac that's the file format that apple itunes music store likes and the ipod likes the best before we check the email here's what's coming up on our show tomorrow a good one planned for you we're going to give you scanning tips from a pro normally dv garage's alex Lindsay, our fed photoshop fanatic talks about photoshop Tomorrow he's going to show you how to use a scanner to get your photos in so you can use Photoshop on them. This is great stuff for scanner users. 
Plus, Cat will show you the easiest way to sell eBay, sell on eBay. It's, a, it's an online service that does all the work for you. Of course, they take a little bit off the top, but that's to be expected. And we've got a paint program. JD's been trying to get this on the air for some time. The ultimate in free, I mean, they say MS paint replacement. You know, this is the Photoshop replacement. It's, an, it's really impressive. One of the best free painting programs out there. That's coming up tomorrow on Call for Help. Now, Kat, let's do yes. a click. Let's go Your ahead. Your site's up? And do it. Yes, yes, it is. It's up. It's up. It's called Music Plasma, and it's the best way to so find cool. music in the type of genre you're interested in. Check it out. I typed in the Beastie Boys. Here are the Beastie Boys. We can actually hear them playing. You type in the artist that you like. It pops up a little real player with a sample of their music, and then it shows you all of the other artists around it that are... Uh, that are similar. The similar color means the more similar the music. And check it out how it moves around. Oh, this is so cool. And then the it'll pop back up in a second. Now, and then, where do uh, they get their database? I mean, how do they know who's you know, related to who? I'm not really sure. I think that it's sort of like uh, on Amazon when you're shopping, and it, if you like yeah. this, you're going to like yeah. this type of technology. Uh oh, have we killed it again? Oh, you guys. Well, at least we got to see a little bit. Of it. But you can change the way it looks, and you can change the colors, oh, and you can neat. change um, how you want your results displayed. But it's got pretty much every artist. I put in so far the rapture check out the rapture and uh, there's a whole article on our website about it and then the way they pay for it is if you want to buy the album you buy yeah, it through Amazon and they make a little money Amazon. from Amazon their associates exactly. that's that's actually a very cool idea but it's not working Music again plasma. but you've got it it's close enough uh-oh you're never going to be able to reload it forget no, it of course not forget it Everybody went there. They took a break, and then as soon as they yeah, saw you were going to do it that. again, they said, boom. Uh-huh. They like the they music like it. plasma. Hey, that's great, though. That looks very cool. Musicplasma.com. Yes, sir. Now it's time for Cat's uh, emails. Yes. We have their clicks. Now let's do the email. Okay. Let's go ahead and answer this one. Okay. Um, okay. John said that he's helping his daughter plan her wedding. And she's trying to... Very nice. Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're my deepest sympathy, John. <laughs> Sorry, John. He's trying to send out um, all of the envelopes to people for invitations, and yeah. he wants to know a database that he can keep all of the invitations, um, responses, and addresses, everything in. Do you know anything that's like oh, that? Oh, there's a lot of ways to, to do that. You know, Windows used to come with this cute little file card system that would have been just right for it, but unfortunately... Mm -hmm. It doesn't anymore. Okay, well, you, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, so much for that, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Um, but there are a lot of uh, file, you know, basically what you're talking about is a database application. Right. And you can do everything from going out and getting Microsoft Access, which I think is overkill for this. Okay. Uh, comes with Office. Um, to a FileMaker, which is a great database program and very graphical and easy to design, however, may also be overkill, certainly more expensive than you need. There's also inexpensive programs like Ask Sam, or you could even use something like we talked about before, the Palm Desktop, mm -hmm. which basically, you know, anything, oh, right. that, yeah, anything that will keep track of names and addresses and allow you to add uh, fields, mm -hmm. in this case, coming, not coming, you know, RSVP'd yet, that kind of thing. Right. Um, I would say he should probably look at Ask Sam because he can try it for free. Okay. It's what we call a free form database, which makes it a little bit easier. He could just enter in the stuff. Whoops. Let me see if I can uh, find it. I thought it was AskSam.com. Uh, it's a freeform database, which means he doesn't... It is AskSam.com. I guess he didn't do the dub, dub, dub. That made it unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, it means you, could, you, don't have, you can enter it in any form you want, but okay. then it has very sophisticated querying capabilities. Plus, there's a free trial download. Okay. Um, I think this is probably a good one. It's been around. I mean, I've been using this literally for 20 form? years. So you put in the fields that you want. You don't even have to define fields. Most okay. databases, the way they work is you can't use them until you say name, address, right. phone number, zip code, yes, no. And you have to, you know, it's a pain to do all that designing. Uh -huh. This you just start typing. I think. It's, a, it's like a word processor, but it has all of the query capabilities of a database. So. Got it like that. AskSam.com. www. Okay. Thank you, and good luck with the wedding. Oh, my goodness. Do we have more time? You shouldn't have to pay for it and plan it, you know? <laughs> yeah. There should be separate functions. That's Chris good. Green, thank you so much, our Mac Daddy, for buying an iPod Mini just so we could show it on the air. And I thank you for being here. I'm going to be back tonight with a live episode, brand new episode of The Screensaver, 7 p.m. Eastern, and, of course, every Monday through Friday here, 3 p.m. Eastern, for the Call for Help show. If you've got a problem with your personal confuser, don't whine, don't moan, don't yell. Call for help. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.